Hello everyone and welcome to the Car Code YouTube channel. My name's Sam and if you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below for new car reviews and content every single week. First of all, I want to say a huge thanks to Lancaster Volkswagen for making this video possible. Today, as you can see, I'm going to be reviewing the all new Volkswagen Touareg R. Now I say all new, it is a facelift, but it's quite a heavily revised facelift. So today I'm going to be going through the specifications, the engines on offer, the colors and interior as well. So if that sounds good, please make sure to keep watching till the end to get a full view of the new Touareg. Starting at the front of the Touareg, you've got the new IQ HD headlamps that go all the way through the front grille. You did have IQ lights on the minor facelift, which arrived in 2020 as well on the Touareg. That gave you the updated VW badge and you could have IQ lights as an option. However, IQ lights are now standard across whatever model you get. This is the R model. You have the black edition, which is based on like an, it's an R line black edition. And you also have the base, which is the elegance. So the elegance gives you a chrome grille instead and focuses more on a comfort premium feel rather than the sporty feel that the black edition and this full fat R bring. Here's a quick look at the colors available on the Touareg. The standard color is pure white across the range and then your metallic paintwork options start at 1,010 pounds. This is the chili red. You can see there that it comes straight from Audi, so it's quite a nice red. We've got premium options like the Oryx white and also lapis blue, exclusive to the R, as well as the silicon grey matte as well. There's also the mellow crystal blue metallic, which is just under £1,400. That's a nice dark blue colour. So a really nice choice of colours. I'm glad they've given us such a great choice on the new Touareg. So let's talk wheel options on the new Touareg. Wheels range between 20 inches and 22 inches. So it starts with the 20 inch Braga alloy wheels. These wheels were available on the pre-facelift, so not the most exciting. You can upgrade them for £195 for the Nevada alloy wheels, which were also available on the pre-facelift, so we've seen them before. They are really nice wheels though and not bad at all for £195. Also £195 is the new 20 inch York alloy wheels. They remind me a lot of those that are offered on the new Tiguan and I do really like the look. They add a modern edge to the car and for £195 you can't go wrong. The next wheels are the 21 inch Leeds alloy wheels and on Elegance these are a £1,105 option. I really like these, they are standard on the black edition and you can get them in this diamond cut look or alternatively you can also get them in this darker black look which I think looks great. As you can see they've got more of an aerodynamic look and just quite a unique alloy so I do like those. The next wheel is the 21 inch Napoli alloy wheels. I'm not too sure about these, I think they just look a bit too busy for the car. What do you think? Last but certainly not least, you have the 22 inch Estoril alloy wheels on the R. You can get them in the diamond cut look or you can get them in gloss black like on this car. I usually prefer a diamond cut wheel but I think the gloss black looks great on this Touareg. One of my favourite features on the Touareg was the air suspension. It's standard on the black edition and on the R and it's just over £1,700 on the Elegance. How cool is that? At the rear of the car, you have this full LED light bar that goes all the way around. You also have the light up Volkswagen logo, which I think looks absolutely excellent. That's across the Touareg range now, so it's really great. And it uses the IQ HD technology, which uses thousands of small little LEDs for the headlamps and the tail lamps. So moving on to the interior of the Touareg and what's changed? Well, it does have a similar look from before, but there's definitely a few little upgrades. So you now have the 15 inch infotainment screen as standard. That used to be an option or available on higher trims, but it's across the range now, which is great to see. You've got the 12 inch digital dials, that's standard as well. You've got this new light up dash as well. It says Touareg. You can also change the ambient lighting as well on here. You can change the colors. Obviously, red matches this car, but you can change the colours of the line and then also this bit of the dash and in the door card. So you've got an upper and a lower section. They used to be able to do this as well, but it was never that obvious because it would be like in the door cards and footwells and then up top. So it wouldn't really look that different, but you can actually create some really cool different combinations. Let's do some orange and a blue something like that you can 
really create some fun color schemes in here, which is nice. Nice sunroof as standard. These comfort seats are lovely and you can adjust those as well. So you can actually change the sides of the depth of the seats. You can change the bolsters, which I remember when I first discovered, I was photographing the Tuareg and it had those. I was literally mind blown because you can literally feel them going in. You hold it down. Wow, you can actually feel that sort of hugging you almost. That's pretty cool. You've got cooled seats and heated seats as well because they're ventilated. So that's the highest setting. Sometimes they take a minute or two to start feeling cooled down. Very premium looking. You've got your little volume control as well, which is quite nice. This is all the same, your gear sticks. It's all in gloss black now, which I'm not a huge fan of. It always felt very premium anyway, the Tuareg, so it didn't need a lot changing. The standard leather is the sole black and it's just the normal seats. You can get the comfort pack on the seats, which is around 1800 pound. And you also have to get the memory electric seats with that. This is on Elegance and that's around 800 pound. So it's around two and a half thousand pound if you want the most comfortable seats. You can get them in a few different colors. You can get them in the sole black. You can get them in the Mistral Grey, and you can also get the in the Atacama Beige with different body colours. So it does give you that more bespoke feel that you'd get on the Bentleys and the Porsches, where you get to pick each sort of different section. Of course, it doesn't give you that level of customizability, but you do have a little bit of choice now. So even the headliners match what interior you go for, which is really nice. Now these R seats are the same on all the R's, they're the comfort seats, so they're very comfortable. And they have the blue little stitching and accents and piping. And they just look really premium and really nice. So I do like that. Well, the massage is making me feel a bit sick now. I'm turning the massage off. After a bit, the massage can make you feel a bit funny, so yeah. The sunroof standard on all models now, it didn't used to be, so really great that you get that. For a big SUV like this, especially being the premium sort of car, it's nice and it does give you that lofty feel. Of course, in the R model, you've got the dark headliner, so it's more of a sporty vibe, more that you'd expect from BMW and the Audi sporty vehicles. In the Elegance, you get more of a lofty feel that you'd expect from cars like the Volvo XC90 and also the Range Rover Sport. So that's sort of what the competition is with this vehicle. You've got the same gear selector, which I really like. It's better than the buttons. And I'm not too sure how I feel about the new gear selector that's coming on the Tiguan, which is like the ID models. But this, this works well. It's not too clunky, but it just does the job very well. You've got your different drive modes here which comes up. So you've got individual, obviously you can change what you'd like on that. Sport, normal, you've got as well with your different drive modes, you've got hybrid and you've got electric mode as well. You can drive it in EV mode. However, I'd drive it mostly in hybrid because you only have about 30 miles of electric only range. Possibly if you're going into London and things like that, you'd drive it in electric only mode, but otherwise you'd drive it in hybrid, I'd say, and charging it every day will get you the best of both worlds. Another standard feature now is the 360 degree cameras or the area view cameras. There you go. Park assist as well. So that will actually steer you into spaces. You cannot actually as well, you can control it and get it to park for you in and out of spaces. It's insane. Very good technology, especially for a car this big. There's definitely people who can't actually park cars this big. So the fact that the car parks itself is great. You've got the rear camera, the front camera, the side cameras. My favorite is the both sides feature. So if you're going for a width restriction or something like that, then that's really handy. I know there's a width restriction near here and it, it just throws me off every time. I just go very slow, but something like this is really useful. So all those cameras, normally I don't really find a rear camera that handy, but the 360 degree cameras, especially on a car this large, is a lifesaver really. A great part of the air suspension is that you can actually lower the back of the car. Really good feature for putting heavy items in, etc. You just press that button and it can lower or you can raise it. How cool is that? For boot space, you get 655 litres on the plug-in models. So that's the Elegance and the R. And on the Black Edition models, you get a bigger 810 litre boot space thanks to this underfloor storage.
The feature which I really love is the power folding tow bar with trailer assist. So this actually helps you with your trailer parking it up. The car assists you with that, which is excellent. And this is £1,195 across the range, which is really good. A lot cheaper than retrofitting one yourself. Great thing about the Touareg, even on the plug-in models, it has a tow limit of three and a half tons so it can tow plenty perfectly capable of towing horse boxes caravans large trailers etc also how clever is this they put the electric points on the side of the tow bar that folds in that is just so clever i am so impressed another great thing on the power folding tow bar is it goes all the way back in by itself as well when you hold the button down so there's no need to kick it in at the last minute it's really great because on previous models you had to kick it with your foot. Also the electric tailgate is standard across the range which is really lovely. And how about the back seat practicality in the Touareg? Well, I've got so much knee room and so much headroom as well. Quite a lot. Now you've also got the pull out armrest which is pretty premium feeling with the cup holders there. Your rear passengers are going to be very comfortable and really nice now that you get the sunroof on all models. Obviously we're in the dark here so it is a bit dark but you're going to have nice light and airy lofty feel especially in the elegance model which I suspect a lot of people will be going for especially as that's the sort of starting point in the range. You do also have this really nifty little pop out section with your USB-C port and your 12 volt socket. You've got dual zone climate control back here as well. Some nets on the back of the seats, which are nice, but they can get a bit saggy over time. You do also have the means to adjust how upright you're sitting. They do recline back a decent amount, not as much as maybe a Range Rover would, but I don't really like sitting like that anyway. I prefer to, you know, be able to sit up a bit. It's fine. The shoulder line isn't massively high, so kids will be pretty happy especially with the booster seats you've got these little lights as well hello which are quite nice and easy to use you've got the grab handles and really nice vents as well on the side like what you used to get on the people carriers they're nice it just gives you that nice fresh feel so really great you can also opt for heated rear seats as well this one doesn't have it but that's another feature which is nice for families but of course the options do add up quite a lot the middle seat what's that like could be an issue i've got size eight and a half feet so that they don't fit on so i have to do each side so that's taking up quite a lot of the foot space it's a little firm the seat but it is actually wide enough to sit on it so i could probably do a longer journey in here and not be too fussed about that so that would be absolutely fine of course it's a large vehicle so you'd expect it to be able to comfortably carry five adults What are the engines available on the Touareg? Well, this is the 3 litre TSI. They're all V6 3 litre engines, and this is the plug in hybrid on the R. That gets you from 0 to 62 in just over five seconds, so it's a very quick car. You can also get the plug in hybrid on the Elegance model, and that's just slightly slower to 0 to 62. There then is also the option of just a normal petrol or diesel, and that's on the Black Editions. But, of course, they're not going to do the best miles per gallon compared to the plug-in hybrid models. So the pure petrol V6 TSI has a claimed miles per gallon of around 25 miles per gallon. And all the diesels have a claimed miles per gallon of 34.4, which isn't too bad for such a large vehicle. I've compiled all the engine specifications here so you can pause to read them. They are all 8-speed Tiptronic automatic transmissions as well. And how much will a Touareg set you back? Well, it starts at just under £68,000, and that's for a Black Edition with the 231 PS diesel engine. So, although the Black Edition is the mid spec, that's the lowest because it's got the diesels. The Elegance is only available with the 3 litre plug in hybrid powertrain, but it's not the same as the R. It's a little bit less powerful, but not a major difference. The R just gives you a little bit more specification, like your air suspension as standard, the sporty styling, the blacked out black line around here, the black mirror caps, different wheels, etc. So you have all those sportier elements on the full fat R model. So how does it compare with its competitors for pricing? Honestly, it sounds like a lot of money, doesn't it? £70,000 there or thereabouts, especially with the R starting at over £80,000. However, 
It shares its platform with the Audi Q8, the Porsche Cayenne, the Lamborghini Urus and the Bentley Bentayga. The Bentley Bentayga starting at just under £170,000, the Lamborghini starting at just under £190,000 and the Porsche starting at around £70,000. I'll insert a picture of what you get for the same price for the Porsche, not a lot. And if you're going to the hybrids, the Porsche does have the same engine as well. But of course, if you want something that looks a little bit more down to earth, but still has all those extra features and is truly a big luxury car, then the Touareg is definitely a good option and is going to be much more reliable than the likes of a Range Rover as well. So then, what are my thoughts on the updated Touareg R? Well, I think it's really nice facelift. It's really great to see little new additions like the HD IQ lighting, especially at the rear. That's a really nice addition. You've got new paint colors and overall just a nice refresh on the car. Would be a great rival to cars like the Range Rover Sport and the Bentley Bentayga, which is based on this platform. It does everything that that car can do and it's a really nice one. This R being the plug-in hybrid is great as well for company car buyers because you'll be paying lower benefit in kind tax. You can also get the plug-in elegance model as well. Although they are expensive vehicles, for what you get for a premium SUV this big, it's actually not a bad deal. And of course, if you want to spend less, you'll be looking at smaller cars like the Tiguan anyway. Thank you to Lancaster Volkswagen for making this video possible. All their links will be in the description down below. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next review.